From Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. This is Bob Case, Dollar. Piedmont Mutual. I've got to see you right away. What's the rush? The girl was pulled out of the East River. It turned out to be a policyholder. What am I, a private eye? Why don't you go to the police to find your killers? Oh, we know the killer. He's being executed right after midnight. What we want to know about is the victim. <laughs> Edmund O'Brien in another transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Piedmont Mutual Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my search for the beneficiary of policyholder Pearl Carassa. Expense account, item one, 450, mileage, Hartford to Sing Sing Prison, last place of residence of the girl's convicted murderer, Marty Pruitt. He was sitting in his cell playing solitaire. Hey, what time is it? About 11, Marty. An hour or more. How much you say the policy was for? $5,000. Five thousand. <laughs> That's funny. Just what I got paid for the job. Who'd she leave it to? The old lady? Yeah. yeah. I knew she would. You know where I can find the beneficiary? The beneficiary? You didn't know the beneficiary, did you? Never had the pleasure. And if you'd known her, you wouldn't be looking for her. Mrs. Carass's virtues are none of my business, Marty. The company is five thousand dollars, and I've got to help him get rid of it. What good are you doing yourself by not telling me where she is, if you know? What time is it now? A little after 11. Boy, did that money look good. You know all the things you can do with $5,000? This girl back home. I was going to get married. Ah, nah. I wasn't going to get married. I'd have put it in roulette like all them other times. You never did say who hired you. No, that's right. I never did. Marty, I know you've been through this before. But you got to admit it's a good point. You're going to die, and the real murderer is getting off free. Does that make sense to you? What's your business, mister? Insurance. Stick to it. I think I will. You know what I'd do if I was you? I'd take that $5,000 and put it in flowers. Thanks, anyway. Hey, Dollar, let me give you some last-minute advice. Leave it alone. It's the most unnatural mess you ever got yourself into in all your life. Expense account, item two, 356 mileage, Ossining, New York, to police headquarters, New York City, where the next morning, Lieutenant Bernard Goldberg offered me photographs of the dead girl, a cigar, and what little information he had. A body. We got the name off the wallet in her hip pocket. What? Slacks. Oh. The patrolman down at the docks picked up Marty Pruitt right at the scene. The trial was cut and dry. But it's funny about these guys. Yeah. He's crazy loyalty to somebody who maybe wouldn't think twice about slitting his own... Yeah? Uh, two M's in remit. Uh, Donna, two M's in remit? No. No. Thanks, Lieutenant. You don't have any idea where I can start looking for the mother. Most I can do for you is to give you the girl's last known address. But we've been over the ground a hundred times. It's a rooming house. Nice but stupid old couple that don't know nothing. This Seattle address on the policy. The 1941. Uh, then San Diego. Then to Cairo, maybe. Who can know? But we're still working on it. Hey, Lieutenant. How do you spell parasitical? Hey, darling. Parasitical. Tell him to look it up. Look it up, Sergeant. What am I, a Webster? Expense account, item three, $1.50 cab fare to a stack of dirty bricks in the Lower East Side. Well, you have no business being up here in the first place, and especially with your husband in that condition. Looking for somebody, mister? Yeah, the manager. Third daughter, you're right. Thanks. Now, don't tell me it's none of my business. Not when I bring soup down there every single day. Why, I never heard like of you. Oh, come in. Howard, why don't you sit down? Thanks. You the manager? 
I am the manager. Howard's the manager. Well, my name is Johnny Dollar. I'm with the house. It's all right. We don't ask for references, do we, Howard? Except under special circumstances. I'm afraid you misunderstand. I'm not looking for an apartment. I'm an investigator with an insurance company, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. We never had a fire in this building that was next door. They keep rubbish in the basement. The company's warned them time and time again. Never does any good. I'd like some information about a girl who I understand was a tenant here. A Miss Pearl Carassa. The police were already here, Mr. Dollar. Four times. Yes, Lieutenant Goldberg thanked us for our cooperation. She was such a nice girl. Quiet. Home-like. Generous. Oh, yes, terribly. How long was she with you? How long was it, Howard? Uh, just two weeks. Just two weeks. But we got to know her so well. She was such a lonely girl. She used to come down after dinner sometimes and talk about music and all the places she'd been. Well, where'd she come from originally? She never said, but she'd been everywhere. In Florida? Everywhere. Did she have any visitors? Oh, no. Oh, no, one of the first things she told us was no visitors. If anybody asked for her, she wasn't home. Such a lonely girl. So pretty, too. You'd think she'd have boyfriends. No, Mr. Dollar, no visitors. Did she act as if she were frightened of something? That's just what the police asked us, and we told them before, and we told them at the trial that we thought she was frightened. Yes, we had her luggage here for a while, but the police took it. I went through it, thanks. Did you notice all the labels from all over everywhere? Wonder what they're going to do with all those lovely dresses and shoes. Look, I know the police asked all these questions, but did you happen to notice if she got any mail? Yes, we did. She didn't. No, not a single letter, no. Hmm. Did she spend much time away from her apartment? Very little, only... Yeah, twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon, but she always came back within an hour. I don't suppose you have any idea where she went. That's right, we don't. Mm. What'd you say you were again? Insurance investigation. Thanks for your time. Expense account item four, fifty dollars in cab fares. It took me the rest of that day and half of the next visiting neighborhood postal substations. It looked like a beautiful way to waste time, but I was betting on the impossibility that her daily excursions had been for mail. This kind of foot padding taught me very little other than the fact that there are a good number of substations in any given half hour area. The second afternoon, I dragged into a fruit store which advertised postal station 324, along with a special on honeydew melon. I walked up to the little cage. Anything for Carassa today? Who? Carassa, general delivery. Just a minute. Grant? Carassa. C A R R A S A. Carassa. Just a minute. Yes, here we are. They send postage to Las Vegas, Nevada. I looked at the envelope. Pearl Carassa, all right. It had been forwarded from Las Vegas three days before. I said something to myself about hard work, patience, and fool's luck, then headed for a phone. This is Dollar Bob. On the Carassa thing, I'm still cold on the beneficiary, but we've got the girl traced as far as Las Vegas. Well, that's a long haul for a $5,000 policy. Do you have a final address on her there? A letter was forwarded to General Delivery here in New York that was originally addressed to the Rambo Club. I got a permit and had it open. Nothing but a dressmaker's bill. I guess the Las Vegas Postal Authority sent it on. That's all I got. You want me to follow it up? Nothing else we can do. You hereby have authorization. Get going. Expense account, item six, $200 air travel and expenses to Las Vegas, Nevada. Specifically, the Rambo Club. It's always the same when I hit Las Vegas. I expect to find tuxedos and evening gowns playing the games. But I never do. A boot black comes in off the street with the last quarter he made and plunks it down on 21. A grandmother with a California pension. A red-headed kid with Oscar's super service tattooed on his overalls. I always ask myself, where's all the big money? The answer is they're getting rid of it in the back room. Oh, oh, Jackpot on the nickel one. <laughs> How do you like that? Oh, boy. Come on. I told my relief I had to go powder my nose. What I really wanted was a drink. <laughs> fly, real fly. <laughs> Is this taken? No, sit down. Thank you. Uh, what do you have, mister? Uh, a good bourbon, soda. Oh, thanks for your confidence in me. I'll fix you up. 
You worked here long? Mm, have I? You like Nevada? Mm. <laughs> What's your hometown? Las Vegas, where I'll head in the summer. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess you know a lot of people here, huh? Mm, by sight, mostly. Very few by name. Everybody's a stranger. Say, hey, uh, maybe you know a friend of mine. I went to school with her. Uh, what was her name again? Uh, oh, yeah, Carassa. Pearl Carassa. Save me my drink, Eddie. I gotta get back to work. Take it easy, mister. Best bourbon in the house. Thanks. Yeah, that's a buck and a half. This is a real clip joint. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, wait a second. You know where I can find Mrs. Henrietta Carassa? She's the mother of a girl that used to hang around here. Pearl. Well? Yeah. I think I can help you. Harry, take over. Here's your buck and a half. Come on. Oh, I'm sure going to win it this time. I'll tell you, boy. Wait a minute. Grace. Grace, will you quit? Grace, will you? Will you quit, Grace? Grace, I'm telling you, quit. Listen to me, Grace. Will you quit? Grace, quit. Ah, shut up. The stairway led to the mezzanine. I followed the bartender along the thickly carpeted hall to a door labeled Peter Barron. My benefactor knocked, a shadow loomed on the frosted glass, and just like that, there he was. A long red gash of a scar ran across the left side of his face, twisting it into a humorless smile. The barkeep was dismissed with a nod. We sat down. Cigar? Thanks, no. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a Mrs. Henrietta Carassa. Why? I got business with her. What kind of business? Insurance. She don't need no insurance. Where can I find her? She don't need no insurance. Well, thanks, anyhow. Sit down. What for? You see this mark across my face? You know how I got this? Asking foolish questions and not giving the right answers. Suppose you tell me what you want with Mrs. Henrietta Carassa. I'll tell Mrs. Carassa you were interested. Oh, look, look. This is no way to talk to me. Now, I got a lot of respect for your business ethics and all that, but you know how it is sometimes. Now, come on, Mr. Insurance. What do you want with Mrs. Carassa? Are you a pretty good shot with that thing? 38's on my specialty. In that case, I've got a check. What kind of a check? A $5,000 kind of a check. From whom? A daughter. Pearl? Pearl. She left her mother $5,000. How did you trace Pearl to Las Vegas? Yeah, never mind. You know what you look like to me? You look like a city official. It's the pinstripe. Now, how do I find Mrs. Carassa? It's very simple. Mike. Mike, this is Mr... What's your name, insurance? Dollar, Johnny. Take Mr. Dollar to see Mrs. Henrietta Carassa. Treat him gentle. He's got some money for her. The place looked and sounded the same on the way out, but something was different. Maybe it was the four six-footers standing at the door. As they fell in behind me, I thought maybe I'd asked one question too many. At the alley, I found out how right I was. He was a tough one. Would have been easier to slip him a Mickey. In just a moment, we will return to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. But first, you hear them all on CBS, and some of the funniest parts of that all comes from the bird brain of a woman, Miss Gracie Allen of Burns and Allen. Top troopers on the American stage for years, top radio stars after that. George and Gracie are now playing a big part in CBS's great Wednesday night lineup. Bing Crosby, Groucho Marx, George and Gracie, and Dr. Christian. Join George Burns and Gracie Allen this Wednesday night on most of these same CBS stations. And now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. No 
There's a lot more to this case than a $5,000 insurance payoff. I'd sensed that from the beginning. A hired killer with a still unknown employer had searched out the girl in her New York hideaway and done a thorough, if not profitable, job. His warnings, which a man of my profession is bound to ignore, were beginning to materialize. As I woke up, I could hear voices. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think he's waking up. Hold his head. Okay. Hey, we ought to get a doctor for him, maybe. Nah, doctor. He looks terrible. Dollar. Dollar, can you hear me? Dollar. Huh? Where you from? Yeah, what's this insurance stuff? Who are you really working for? Is it the New York Police Department? Where did you get these cards in your wallet? Come on, Dollar. Answer me, Dollar. Mm. Give me some water. Get him some water. Hey, get some water, Joe. Now, sit up. Come on, come on, sit up. Here, I'll help you. There. All right. All right, now, what's the idea? That's what we'd like to know. Where do you know Pearl Carassa from? Oh, that name. Come on. I'm looking for her mother. What do you want with her mother? Uh, she left an insurance policy. Girl, $5,000. Hey, here's the water. Thanks. Ah, who are you? Pete Barron. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the face is familiar. You mustn't be bitter, Dollar. Why? Why questions? Look, I'm just a working man. It's it's so simple. There's a company in Hartford, an insurance company. They sold a policy. The girl aboard it is dead. The policy is for $5,000. The money goes to her mother. All I want to know is, where is mother? No kidding. Are you really an insurance man? No kidding. Well, why didn't you say so? Why didn't you come right out with it? Why do you go sneaking into bars asking funny questions? Mister, do you know a Mrs. Henrietta Carassa? Here in Las Vegas? Here in Las Vegas. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll look it up for you. Thanks. Now, lay me back down again. Expense account item seven. Twenty dollars, doctor bills. Nothing serious, but I couldn't go out in the street looking like that. I stayed in my hotel room for two days until the swelling went down. On the third morning, I had a visitor. It was the girl who gave me the brush off in Rambo's bar. She had an overnight bag with her. There was a label. Bloomington, Indiana. You're in trouble, you know that? Three days ago, that information would have done me some good. I mean, real trouble. You don't think Pete Barron let you out of there because he believed your story. No more than you think you weren't followed here. I know, I know. She'd never come here. But Pearl, get a message to her, will you? Tell her never to show up here again. She won't. What do you mean she won't? She's dead. We got to her. Do you know why? I gotta get out of here. Wait a minute. Why did Pete Farron hire Pruitt to kill her? Let go. I gotta get out of here. She came up here for a purpose. Yeah, but I didn't know she was dead. You're gonna let him get away with it? It's narcotics. The gambling place is up front. They fly it up from Mexico at night and get out by morning. Pearl found out about it, and that's why they did it. Does Baron know Pearl told you all this? I don't think so, but I'm not taking any chances. I got a bus ticket. It leaves from across the street. I only got a minute. Good luck, honey. After she left, I went to the window and watched her leave the hotel and cross the street. A nice girl, I thought. And I wondered how she got mixed up with Baron's crowd. The bus door opened, and she put one foot on the step. She crumpled to the sidewalk. The little overnight bag tumbled into the gutter. I got downstairs just ahead of the deputy sheriff, just after the bus had left. The people were still standing around. She was a nice kid. You knew her? Not for long. Did you see this happen? Yeah. Step over here for a second, will you, please? May I have your name, please? Yeah, sure. Here, yeah, here's my ID card. Insurance investigation. Something about her? No, oh, a friend of hers. Pulled out of the East River. Pearl Carassa. Shot to death. Carassa? Yeah, you didn't know? Oh, we heard she left town. That was about all. She got mixed up with Pete Barron and her family disowned her. Well, did you see what happened to this girl? She was just getting on the bus. It sounded like a rifle. She was working for Pete Barron, too. Yeah, I thought I recognized her. 
He just came up to see me. Had quite a story to tell. Barons running narcotics up from Mexico by plane. Yes, so I've heard. We've had our eye on him for months, but we aren't ready to pick him up yet. Why would she tell you that? She had to tell somebody. She had a message she wanted me to deliver. To Pearl. Well, this is beginning to tie up. Uh, but what's insurance got to do with it? Carissa girl left a policy, $5,000 to her mother. <laughs> her conscience must have bothered her. It comes from one of the finest families in this part of the country and starts downhill with a crowd like that. Now, her mother needs $5,000 like I need two haircuts. And, mister, if I were you, I'd take that check out to Carasses and catch the next plane out of town. You know something, Sheriff? That's just what I'm going to do. And that's just what I tried to do. Expense account item 8, 50 cents cab fare to the Carasses State on Juniper Drive. They should have charged admission. There was an ivied stone wall running all around it and a mild drive through a cactus rock garden to the mansion. I felt a little like a grocery boy delivering a check for a measly $5,000. I was met at the door by a butler in a business suit and was toured around an indoor swimming pool and potted palms to the library, buried in a large leather chair reading a 25-cent version of How to Be Your Own Gardener was the man of the house. I was introduced and left alone with him. Insurance? Investigation. How long since you've heard from your daughter? Oh, such a long time, such a long time. I is she in more trouble? She's dead, Mr. Carrasco. Dead? Pearl, dead? Can't be. What happened? She's killed. An accident? No, it wasn't. Not an accident. Someone hired a killer. Oh. My fault. I knew. I knew, and I did nothing. Gregory. Gregory, I've been looking all over for you. Have you watered the palms today? No. You didn't water the palms. Now, Gregory, the leaves will get all yellow and fall all over the floor, and it'll take simply minutes to clean up the mess around the pool. And I told you specifically that the music club had changed from Wednesday to Monday, and Monday is tonight. This is a man from the insurance company. How do you do? Now, Gregory, please do this one thing for me. You know how much I have to do. Henrietta, it's Pearl. I told you never to speak that name in my presence. She's dead. Dead? She was murdered, Mrs. Grasso, in New York. I'm not sorry. Maybe I should be, but I'm not. Not in the least. She's never done anything but bring shame to me and to her father. She brought these awful people to the house. To this house, mind you. Humiliating me in front of my friends. She even wanted to marry one of them. Henrietta, please, not now, Henrietta. I'm not adept at putting on false grief like you are, Gregory. She was no good. When she brought this man in, I told her right there and then, you're not my daughter. Go to the people that you fit in with. Well, this is the way it had to end. I'm going upstairs. Uh, Mrs. Carassa, just one thing more. If you'll sign this paper, my job will be over. I have a check for you. A check? What kind of a check? She left you $5,000. Me? She left me $5,000? I remember. The policy she took out in high school. She never canceled it. Even when you sent her away. I don't want it. I don't want it. Tell me. Do you know who killed my daughter? Well, the man that did the actual killing has already been executed in New York State. The man who hired him... It's only a suspicion I'd rather not say. Baron. What about this check? I I don't think she wants the money. You can tell your company that. Look, Mr. Carasso, I've come a long way. I'll leave it here. You can sign the form and mail it. Would you mind calling me a cab? Expense account item nine, 50 cents cab fare. Just as we pulled out of the driveway, somebody else pulled in. I don't know if he saw me, but I saw him. It was Pete Barron. Are you sure, Donner? Positive. Sheriff, I woke up looking at that face. What would Barron be doing at Carassa's place? Could be a connection you didn't know about. Yeah, this could be the tie-up. We've been looking for somebody who supplied the dough. It's a big operation. I'm sure Barron didn't have enough dough to start it. Well, what are we waiting for? <laughs> down with the sheriff. We bypassed the butler by taking him into custody. 
We heard voices coming from the library and stopped outside the door. She threatened to go to the police. She may have been your daughter, but she wasn't mine. Now, why did you tell her? I didn't. She found out. She knew about us? Sure, she knew about you. She knew about everything. She would have turned you and your wife in a long time ago if you hadn't been her parents, but she was willing to turn me in, and I did what I had to. It wasn't my idea, you coming into this thing, but now that you're in it, you've got to learn that things like this happen. Yes, and things like this happen, too. Come on. Drop it, Carassa. And look who's here. Hello, Mrs. Carassa. Let's go, Carassa. No, wait. I want you to know about this woman. I want you to know what she is. All respectability and shine. Chamber music and non-objective paintings in high society. And where did the money come from, Henrietta? From narcotics. From the same people you hated so much. Gregory, stop I it. had a tile business before the war, but it wasn't good enough for her. She wanted this place, Italian marble, tapestries. She met Baron in back rooms and arranged to have me buy into his gambling casino. That was the first thing. Don't you dare put the blame on me. Whose idea was it to have the narcotics flown in? How many times did I beg you to stop? But you never listened to me. You couldn't keep from impressing the ladies and gentlemen. And when Pearl wanted to marry a decent young man, you insulted him right out of this house. This is the woman who sent her daughter away because her friends were not good enough. I don't think you need me anymore, Sheriff. I'll just take that check and go home. Expense account, item 10. $200, transportation back to Hartford. I don't know what you can do with a check. If it were up to me, well, I'd use it to clean up the respectable slums. But that's not my problem. Expense account total, $712.55. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd and David Ellis with music composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Edmund O'Brien can currently be seen starring in the Harry M. Popkin United Artists production, D.O.A. Featured in our cast were High Everback, Joseph Kern, Bill Johnstone, Bill Conrad, Martha Wentworth, Sarah Selby, Howard McNair, and Virginia Gregg. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Join us again next week at this same time when, from Hollywood, Edmund O'Brien returns in another transcribed adventure of... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. no more pitiful sound in the world than that of a hungry child. And it's a sound which can be easily heard in Europe and Israel, Korea, and the islands to the east. You can do much to help alleviate this condition through your continued purchases of care packages. Help banish the sound of hunger through your donations of care packages now. There's a man with a little black bag turns up on most of these CBS stations every Wednesday night. And out of it comes some of the most light-hearted and most moving stories on the air. The man? Why, it's Dr. Christian, of course. And tomorrow night's the night for another of his famous visits. Be sure to hear Dr. Christian starring Gene Hirschholt as the beloved small-town physician every Wednesday night. Now stay tuned for The Adventures of Philip Marlowe, which follow immediately over most of these same CBS stations. This is CBS, where Wednesday night is Bing Crosby night, the Columbia Broadcasting System.